The 10 attitudes for leadership development. 10 attitudes for leadership development. Leaders are very unique people. They have a very simple distinction, and that is their thinking is different. Leaders do not think like followers. Leaders used to be followers, all of them. But what made them cross the line was a certain mentality that kicked in somewhere. Something happened to them that made them think differently. And I normally call that attitudes that influence people. If you want to be an impactful personality, you have to develop certain types of thinking and perceptions that change the way you see yourself and see the world. I call this the spirit of leadership. Now there are only two animals on the planet that the Creator identified himself with. The first one is the eagle. The eagle. And the second animal is the lion. And I discovered that both of them are the kings of their domain. The eagle is the king of the bird kingdom. And the lion is the king of the animal kingdom. The lion has what I call the spirit of leadership. And this word spirit here is referring to attitude. A leader has a attitude that makes him or her different from followers. And the lion exhibits that attitude. We have to cultivate the same attitudes that the lion has because the lion apparently has been given the same attitudes that God himself identifies with and he put it in these creatures. And apparently you and I are supposed to be the king of the animal kingdom, the rulers of all animals. So obviously we have somewhere trapped on the inside these same potential attitudes. What makes the lion so unique? Well, here's one of my favorite quotes that I put in my books, and I believe it really brings home the point. An army of sheep led by a lion will always defeat an army of lions led by a sheep. The lion is the king of the jungle because of one word, attitude. Now we don't want to lead by fear, but it does take respect for you to become a leader. What makes these massive animals respect such a small cat? The attitude is the difference. It doesn't matter how big you are, how intelligent you are, how many degrees you get. It's your mind that keeps you small. And it doesn't matter how small you are or how un unintelligent you may seem to be or how much you don't have. It's your mind that makes you the leader. Attitude. The attitude, therefore, is the difference. Write this down. The difference between a leader and a follower is attitude. Why? Because it is unique attitudes that distinguish leaders from followers. They think differently. And that's because attitudes produce certain behaviors. And those behaviors stretch the leader beyond the limitations of the norm. In other words, it is the thinking of the person that makes them see circumstances differently. The word problem is a human definition of an opportunity to grow. If you call it a problem, it's a negative. If you see it as an opportunity, it becomes a positive. How do you think? Write this down. Attitude is a product of belief. This is very important to develop your leadership. Attitude is a product of belief. You cannot have an attitude beyond your belief. So your attitude comes from your belief system. The lion is the king because of what he believes about himself and what he believes about the lion, I mean the, the elephant and the giraffe. He believes that they are lunch and he believes he can eat them. 
His belief system controls the whole situation when they meet. Write this down. No one can live beyond the limits of their belief. So if you want to live beyond what you're living now, you have to change your belief system. Leaders are born when you have the discovery of a new belief system. The secret to anyone rising is what happens in their belief system. Your life is what you think it should be. That's exactly what you are right now. You are what you thought you should be. And if you don't like who you are, you got to change what you think you should be. That's how leaders are born. Your leadership development is determined by, number one, your perception of who you are. Number two, by why you think you exist. And number three, these are very important, your sense of significance. I am giving you my secret to life right here. What brought me from the floor to flying my own jet is these simple statements here. You got to first change your perception of who you are. And that starts with a belief system. Secondly, you must change your perception of why you think you exist. And number three, your sense of significance. Once you discover, no matter where you are right now, it doesn't matter, I don't care what situation you're in now, where you're working, or what situation you're in, if you get these three things to come alive in this session, when I see you again, you'll have a story to tell me. Number one, your perception of who you are. You've got to change it. And most of our perceptions are other people's concepts of us, and therefore we don't have self-concept, we got other concepts. What is your perception of who you are? And the second one, why do you think you exist? You gotta discover that you were born for something, some reason, there's some purpose for your life. If you don't discover that, you'll always have a job, and we'll bury you in an average grave with an average tombstone. And you must develop a sense of significance in your life. Discover that you are important to the human race. You are important to the world. You are important to your universe. When I had to grapple with that question, it was tough. Because I've been taught by society, like you have, that you are just a social security number or some NIB number or you some just kind of a, a, a worker in the system. But that's not true. You were born to do something very significant in the world. And you have to get to the point where you believe that. Cultivating these attitudes are the key to becoming a leader. Now, when attitudes of leadership is married to the ability of leadership, then you become a leader. You can have potential, but if you don't have the belief, your potential becomes a victim of your present belief. So your mentality has to be equal to your ability for you to manifest leadership. You do have the ability, you were born with it to be a leader, but your mentality hasn't matched it yet. And that's why all of your capacity to lead is buried under your lack of belief that you can. Belief is so powerful, it can make an elephant act like a sheep in the presence of a lion. You know, normally people who are insecure, Whenever they meet somebody who is confident, they always call the confident arrogant. When you discover who you are, you can't help but be confident. I don't pretend, I don't try to have confidence. If you try, that means you ain't got it. It's you're faking it. Confidence is a product of belief. What you believe about yourself determines the way you think about yourself, and the way you think about yourself is the way you behave. And you behave bold and confident and fearless because there's some things you discovered about you and about life that makes life change a perception. You can never fully carry out the mandate of leadership if you don't have the mentality of leadership. First of all, your attitude got to be right. Then you must marry that to attributes. That means gifts you were born with. Then you got to marry that to aptitude. That means now you got to educate and train those gifts. That's why you read and study and go to school for your, for your aptitude to be increased. And then 
Your altitude means you got to change the level of associations you are in. When you change your aptitude, you normally want to change your altitude. Leaders choose their friends based on their destination. And one of the keys to developing leadership is you have to appreciate the fact that no one is responsible for your life except you. They say that if an eagle meets another bird in top flight, it has to be another eagle. Because they're the only birds that can fly at that altitude. If you keep running into pigeons, you are flying too low. Eagles never flock. They only find them one at a time. So if you keep attracting a gang of people around you at work, people who criticize get time for it. That's why I ignore them. I ignore my critics because they got time for it. I'm too busy. I'm too busy succeeding. I'm giving them something to, to criticize. The greatest revenge in life they say is success. It's not ability, it's mentality that makes a leader. It's not ability, it's what? Mentality. That elephant and that hippopotamus has power. They got ability, strength, size. They got might, they got ability. What they lack is mentality. Lion got a different mentality, so he eats them for lunch. What you think is more important than what you do. And so if you want to change, you got to work on this attitude bit. The spirit of leadership is a mindset. It dictates your motivation. It, re it is revealed in your response to your environment. The spirit of leadership is a perception of yourself and the world. How do you see the world? The spirit of leadership is your convictions that regulate your thoughts about yourself and people. The spirit of leadership is your personal private philosophy of life. How you think about life and yourself. The spirit of leadership is your thoughts about oneself and one's environment. The spirit of leadership is your thoughts about yourself and the environment. It is your belief system which controls your behavior. The spirit of leadership is the source of your action which determines the response and how you interpret the world. This is very important. I see the world differently from most people because of my belief system, which becomes my attitude creator. The spirit of leadership is the source of your actions which determine the response of how you interpret life. And therefore, it is your mental conditioning. Your mental conditioning. The spirit of leadership is your mental conditioning. Success keeps the right company all the time. You have to nurture yourself so that you can produce the right attitudes. And nurture means to feed yourself the right information. We are what we think and we become what we continue to think. And this is why I constantly monitor my thinking processes. But every time I have a chance, I have a book in the bathroom, a book in my briefcase, I got a book in the office, you know, I got a book by the toilet. So wherever I am, I'm working on a chapter somewhere. Because you become what you think. You cannot rise above the plane of your mental conditioning. So I got to constantly keep feeding my mentality. I have to work on it so I can work up my altitude of mentality. You, to change your life, you must change your mind. This is why the heart of leadership is working on the way a person thinks.